I think we're just getting started. Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth assembly tutorial for Halo Reach within the Master Chief Collection on the PC. Now that that long sentence is out of the way, let's take a look at special effects for the rocket launcher as well as the atmosphere, in this case fog, for Forge World. So let's say we wanted to make a rocket launcher and we wanted to make it similar to the Fat Man from Fallout, which is basically a mini nuclear device uh, launcher. If you'll remember from our weapon basics video, I went over that when you change the weapon, you're actually not changing the projectile entity. You're leaving that alone. Well, we're going to be messing a little bit with that because we are going to be uh, alter, altering the detonation uh, as a whole, and we're going to be altering that in terms of the cosmetic effect as well as the physical effect that becomes of that. So you're going to need to open a couple of things. The first is detonation.effect, which is going to be located under the effect tag right here, E-F-F-E, and then rocket launcher underscore rocket under projectiles, which is going to be closer to the bottom under there, and then fireball.prt3, which is located under particles, which is up a little bit, and there we go. And then lastly, the rocket underscore launcher underscore rocket underscore explosion dot JPT exclamation point, which, and that long name, um, that is actually just damage underscore effects, and it's under here. So once you have those and you have them available, we're going to start with the detonation effect. So there's a couple things that you can do in order to change the actual effects of these rockets in our case and there's other things that we can't really do uh, without knowing what we're uh, actually messing with now in this case we're gonna go to events and you're gonna see there's several options here for us to change we have lens flare, we have nudicles, we have flash, we have fireball the biggest one or the one that I'm assuming you're most interested in is probably the fireball but I'll also change the nudicles a little bit just to have a uh, dramatic effect. So now that is, uh, I think, four times larger. And we're also going to increase our fireball to two. Now this is actually duration. How long is this effect going to be active? And I'll show you what that means. So you can see that fireball lingered, and I also had some you see those particles that are still there too. Those linger. So that was intentional because we're making a bigger explosion. We want it to be more dramatic. But those effects don't actually affect the damage, which can be located under projectile, or uh, I think, yeah, that, or maybe project uh, damage effects, uh, which we'll get to in a second. The second change you're going to need to make is under fireball.prt3. And it's at the very bottom, it's unlabeled. And you're going to have to do some trial and error in order to get your desired effect. But for me, I'm just going to be showing you the basics. And under this, um, under this section right here, I'm going to be keeping everything uh, constant in terms of its proportion. Uh, but I will be uh, changing the magnitude of these effects by 4. So I'm keeping my negatives negatives, I'm keeping my positives positives, and I'm just multiplying everything by 4, and I'll end up multiplying everything again to get our desired effect. So now, I should have an explosion that is much bigger. And when I modify these things, I'm going to make changes to the environment, because it, it's having an effect on the entire environment as a whole. So anything that this touches may change, and even things that don't, uh, that it doesn't touch, might have a change as well. For example, these waterfalls, uh, the, at, the this setting may change as a result of the rocket launcher. And you can see that those explosions are much bigger, but they're not to the level of a mini nuke. And I'm going to demonstrate uh, that in a second. So the last thing you're going to be changing for a rocket launcher is under the damage effects. And this is where things like the actual damage and the radius of the damage are located. So you're going to need to change the radius. And these values right here are trippy, man. I mean, <sighs> they can be aggravating. But 
in order to avoid a lot of problems, I'm going to be keeping a number that is a multiple of the originals. Uh, for example, if I was to just put any numbers right here, then the effects might be inconsistent. They may not hurt the player. They may only hurt certain things. Um, you can really create an unstable product uh, for this section right here. Now, this should increase the damage uh, radius of the actual uh, projectile, but it won't, actu it won't actually increase the initial damage. The damage will stay the same, but it'll just be in a larger area. So you can see uh, this is much stronger than the original rocket launcher from the game. But we want to make a nuke. So let's do that. And when we change all these values, we're going to be, without going through and systematically saying, all right, we're going to try this, and we're going to try it this way, and we're going to keep this as a control, and this is going to be our variable. I'm not trying to make a precise product for you today. I'm just trying to show you that these are the general changes that you can make. So we're going to make a super, super big fireball. We're going to multiply everything that has already been multiplied by 4 now by 10. So this is 40 times the initial effect. And I'm just going to add a lot of zeros. Now let's do that. And you can see that this is the unstable uh, behavior that I'm talking about, which if you're going for a nuclear explosion uh, or a mini nuclear explosion, then maybe you want that. Okay. Now we can all agree that that is a super cool effect, but it's not actually doing damage to me. Even if I do it right here, and I'm super close, and, and even in the fireball at times, uh, we want damage to be done to me. So we're going to step out of a realm of special effects and actually change the physical attributes, which are going to be located under this damage effects uh, tag. So we've changed radius. Let's change the actual damage. We can change our damage upper bound and damage upper bound minimax. Uh, sorry, some guns will actually have a lower bound, but for right now, we're just going to be changing this. So let's change our damage to something like 2,400 and see what that does. And let's also increase the radius. Um, hopefully this won't bug out, but let's see what happens when I hit right here. I'm not trying to hit the tank. So it, all the vehicles have pretty much exploded as a result of that. And you can see that this is a really, really cool effect. I'm actually going to get in forge mode and I'm going to drive around. So do you remember when I was ta talking to you about the duration? So some of these effects that are starting to really factor together, uh, everything's coming together to... Oh man, that one notification, like you start this recording and you think, okay, I turned off Steam notifications, I turned off all my other clients, I should be good. And then that one just kills the entire thing. Anyways, what I'm saying is everything is the equation, right? That equation is coming back now and it's factoring in all these many changes that we're making. So, let's say, so, okay. Right now, we have a, a product that works. Okay, We have a super mega launcher, and the damage basically one-shots vehicles. Uh, it has a wide area of effect. This is what we're looking for. Except, personally, I hate the rocket launcher rocket itself. I want it to go a little bit faster. Why can't we just have a mini nuke, and it can get places faster? It has a longer range. Right, so let's do that. And you'll notice that some of these values are similar to what we've already changed before. You'll be starting to see things um, that are similar to each other once you get started doing this. So what I'm going to do to make this a really cool rocket launcher is decrease the initial velocity to 1. And I'm going to increase the final velocity to 35. And now my takeoff time with the rocket will be a lot slower. And also look at this, guys. So the area as a whole has now started to change as a consequence of a rocket launcher. Now, you can just say that this is a bug. This is an un unintended consequence. We could play around and minimize these effects, but I'm just trying to show you the possibilities. So now, we have that is just super cool. But let me show you right here. And actually, let me lower this initial velocity down even further. 
So you can see I lowered it enough that the gravity actually had an effect on the projectile. So if we don't want that to happen, we can just get rid of a gravity. Let's say that we are in the year 2500 and have discovered anti-gravity projectiles. And I'm even going to lower the initial velocity once more to point zero 0.01. And watch this. Look at that. So I have to get a little bit closer, but now it's starting to pick up. And there it goes. So now we have our pretty cool rocket launcher. And I'm just doing this for dramatic effect to, to show you what the initial velocity is. But I mean, you do, do not... Oh, man. Uh, I guess I got too close. <laughs> I guess I got too close. But anyways, that's the basics of modifying the rocket launcher and modifying those special effects um, to really, really engage your audience, uh, in this case, the player, so that they feel like what they're shooting is super strong and they actually get to engage that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reset the map and we're going to take a look at fog. All right, so I've reset my map and I've closed out all those tabs and assembly. So now I'm ready to get started with the fog. And we're going to look not for GOG, but for fog. And it's going to be under atmosphere underscore fog. Now this is a very basic tutorial for fog. I will be talking about the actual map itself and how we can change things like the skybox and all of those type things that are a little bit more advanced, not terribly. Uh, but this is just going to be about the atmosphere. I figured this could be an environment, an atmospheric type video, a player immersion type video. So that is what I'm going to be sticking to. So you're going to notice in fog that there are several things. There's actually one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. There's three different sections of three different colors for fog. And it appears that way, but it's not actually uh, what you think it is. So you also notice that we have thick fog, heavy fog, and uh, sky fog and light fog, right? A lot of fogs. So in the map, there are actually origin points for the fog. And these fogs, these fog types are different. You can even change the height of a fog, uh, the intensity of a fog, uh, how much you can see through, how close it is to you, the player. All of these things are possible to change. But let's just change the basics. So if you will, let's, let's look in game, right? So this is actually how the fog is naturally. We haven't made any changes yet. So you can see that it, it does a pretty good job of increasing player immersion because we're not going to be busy looking at stuff like all that. Yeah. That's like, um, you know, you have that uncle for Christmas and they're not a good rapper, but they live alone and um, you get that present and it's just the presentation isn't there. That's kind of like what Fog does. It is the, we have a badly wrapped present, but we just put it in the bag. That's what Fog is for video games. Anyways, let's change our thick fog to one. And let's change our heavy fog down to zero, because I also want to show you what this does. So now we have no fog, right? So let's get our heavy, heavy fog back and let's put it at 2000 and we're going to leave it there. We're also going to increase thick fog to 2 and then we're going to increase light fog to 20. So now we should be getting some subtle, <laughs> some subtle changes in fog. All right. So pretty, pretty basic change. We haven't changed anything else other than those three things, but the fog is definitely much stronger. Now let's change our fog radius to 20 and let's see what happens does anything happen here okay so the change in fog radius makes basically what it doesn't actually change the radius of its of the fog to the player but the radius at which the stronger effects are felt uh, that is m my definition crimson's definition in this equation okay so now let's change the uh, Let's change the map fog. Let's change the map fog to zero. Okay. So it's kind of weird how that variable works. It doesn't work like you would expect it to. But let's put it back, or put it closer to its original point. And let's say, let's go to negative 
30. I think it was like a negative 50 or negative 35 or something. Okay, so. All right, so now with these settings, I'm at a place where I am happy with the result. And what I'm going for here is a very, um, kind of like a Silent Hill type uh, fog. It's very thick, you can't see, but maybe 20 feet in front of you. And uh, I think I have that effect. But let's say I wanted to make this as if I'm going through an infected area, or maybe I just survived an atomic blast, or maybe there's a dust storm. And if you had wind, and you had all these sound effects too, you could really make a pretty cool environment, which that won't be discussed, but let's say we change our fog color to pink, and that's way too strong. Nobody's going to like that. So, let's go to 1. And then let's change our fog color to 0.5. We're going to reduce it. So now we're starting to get this purple, uh, kind of pink-purple mix, this haze. And let's change the green to point 7. Alright, so now we have this uh, light amber color. And this would be good, you know, if maybe you are in the wake of an aftermath and you decided to, uh, let's say we messed with the shaders of a tree to remove all the uh, all the branches, then we could really have an environment that would be suitable for a pretty cool infection mode. Uh, hint, hint. So, with that being said, that is the basics of Fog. You're going to have to play around a little bit to find what uh, you're looking for. But for me, this, I like this. I can envision, you know, maybe a mission where we have to get to an extraction point and uh, people are charging at you and you don't know what to do. So with that being said, that's the end of this video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the description below. I will also be posting a link to a frequently asked questions page regarding assembly. So check that out as well if you're having problems. And if you guys have any recommendations for me, I will gladly take them right now. I've got a long list of stuff. You guys have been very forthcoming with that. So I appreciate that. We should be good on videos for a while. But keep sending them so I get to know what you guys want to know the most. Um, with that being said, have a great day. Adios.